Hi, Simon here with a new video, this time about Spring Boot, excellent support for Docker Compose. So let's have a look at the Docker Compose support in Spring Boot. It was added in Spring Boot 3.1 and uh, I use here IntelliJ for the demo and just create the project with the Spring Initializer from IntelliJ, you could also go to start.spring.io and do that there. Um, for the demo, I will use Java and for the build system, I use Maven because I prefer Maven, but it really doesn't matter if you're using Gradle or Maven. And it also doesn't matter if you use Java 17 or 21. I choose 21 because I want to use the newest one. So let's move on to the page with the dependencies. And here we can select Docker Compose support. Then I need a database. I prefer Postgres. So we use that one. And then I need uh, JDBC to access um, the database. And finally, I use web that we can create a REST controller that will create some data in the database. So that's it. Let's create the project. And here we see that uh, it created a regular uh, project and with a specialty. So we find a compose YAML. That's a Docker compose file, which defines a service that's called Postgres. And it uses the latest Postgres image. Then we have uh, three environment variables, the DB name, the password, and the username that will be uh, used to create the image. And finally, we expose the port. So there will be a random port for our connection, but that's the port that Postgres is using. That's the 5432, the standard port. Now, let's before we start the application, let's uh, create a database table. For that, I just use um, a schema SQL file that's also a feature from Spring Boot. This one will be executed, but usually this will be only executed if you use an embedded database. So we have to change the SQL init mode from embedded to always. Now that's just for the purpose of our demo. I wouldn't use that in production. Then I would use something more um, like Flyway or Likibase that has more features uh, to to database migrations. But here, that's fine. So I use create table if not exists. So if I restart it, it will not be recreated. That's a syntax from Postgres. And here we have an ID as an int as primary key. And we have a name with the var car. That's not null. That's it. So now we want to insert data in this person table. How can we do that? We create a REST controller. So we okay, call it person controller. This is a REST controller and has a post method. So we have a post mapping here, like so. And uh, it's just called post. And this will have a request body, a person. And finally, this person will be a record with an ID and a name. So we just assign the ID here. Usually you would have something like a sequence, for example. But for our demo, that's good enough. So we uh, assign the person ID directly. Now, what we want to use to interact with the database is something new. It's called JDBC client. That was recently added to Spring Boot as well. So we inject that. And with the JDBC client, we can execute SQL statements. So we can do an insert into person with the ID and the name and with the values. And here we use a prepared statement for sure that we don't get a SQL injection. 
and we can just pass the parameters uh, and the person name and finally we uh, up call update and this will insert or execute the insert statement. So let's start the application and check the log what happens. We can see that Spring Boot is uh, finding the Docker Compose file and starting uh, our Postgres container. And now let's have a look at the uh, Docker desktop. Here we see that we have uh, a running Postgres database. Now we can go ahead and uh, add a connection right here in IntelliJ to Postgres. Um, the user will be uh, my user. We have a secret called secret. And finally, the database name is my database. And now we uh, have to check the port number because uh, the Docker Compose support will assign a random port. It's the 63070. 63070. And check if this works. Finally, we can access the database. And now we have also a table, but the table is empty now. So what happens behind the scene is Spring Boot is starting uh, Docker Compose, and then the Postgres database will be started, and uh, Spring Boot uses a new concept called Service Connection that will automatically um, use the parameters from the container to create the connection. Here we also see that we have the Hickory pool, the connection pool, to the database that created a PG connection to uh, this database that is running. Finally, we want to insert some data in this table. How can we do that? We just use our person controller. Um, in IntelliJ, there is an integrated HTTP client, and beside the post mapping, you see this globe. If you click on it, you can use generate request in HTTP client, and this will generate a template to call um, the post. And uh, here we just can add the JSON data. So we use the ID one and the name, let's say Simon. And uh, if we execute that, it is successful. And if you look at the database table, we see here we have the person with the ID uh, one and the name Simon. Now, what will happen if we stop our application? So let's hit the stop button here in IntelliJ. We check here, we have no more application running. And if we go to the containers view of Docker Desktop, we also see that there are no more running containers. Okay, so let's start the application again. And finally, we will see again a new container running. It has a different port, 63447. So let's change that to 63447. Uh, test the connection. Looks good. OK. And now let's check the table. So the data is still there. That means um, the container is reused when restarting the application, so we don't lose any data. And we can use the same database also for uh, development. If we don't want that the uh, database is stopped when we stop the application, we can do that in application properties, add a configuration, and then the database will stay running. This was a short introduction to Spring Boot Docker Compose support. If you enjoyed it, please like the video and also subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.